Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is my first thoughts on One Night in Cars on video. It's going to be fancy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be whimsical. Uh, definitely a much lighter tone than the most recent expansion, Whispers of the Old Gods. And it's a throwback to one of the most popular and innovative and creative instances in World of Warcraft, for those of us who have had that experience. You know, dancing on the chessboard, moving around the flame wreaths. It's a great time. I'm looking forward to see how they adapt it uh, into the adventure in Hearthstone. But in any case, we have seven cards uh, already released that we can look at, and I'm going to give you my first instincts about those cards. So here we go. So, first off, we have the Ivory Knight. Uh, the Ivory Knight is a 4-4 four, four for 6. It's a Paladin class card. Uh, it has the effect Battle Cry, Discover a Random Spell, and then Recover Health equal to the casting cost of that spell. Now, first things first, 4-4 four, four for 6 is absolutely terrible. It's very weak, has very little board presence, it's not proactive. And Paladin already has a lot of really good self-healing effects anyway. It's already got Forbidden Healing. Uh, it's already got Guardian of Kings, if you were so inclined. It's got a ton of effects that can heal it that are competitively played and really paladin doesn't need more cards that hit the board and don't do anything other than generate value they need more proactive cards they need more cards that are going to hit the board and have an immediate effect um that being said this is still really good it has the potential to be a real blowout in a control matchup uh you can drop this and then get for example lay on hands heal yourself for eight have an extra lay on hands in your hand you could drop this and get a consecrate a really clutch consecrate on turn 10 you drop this and get an extra quality to use with your Pyromancer. There's a lot of good things uh, that can happen here with this card. But overall, I don't think you're going to see a lot of it. You might see it in some weird kind of control Paladin decks. But the thing is that all the best Paladin decks right now are mid-range. This off Paladin is kind of naturally mid to late game, and that might be the only deck you're going to see Ivory Knight in. Overall, not a terribly strong card, but definitely really interesting. Uh, it's possible that the introduction of some really potent new secret or some really potent new low-cost spells could bring Ivory Knight up to where it needs to be to get play. But as it is right now, I don't think you're going to see it very much in Constructed. Uh, in Arena, it's fucking fantastic. Anything that discovers cards, fantastic. Anything that covers health, fantastic. If you do it right, it's just going to be a heal bot. It's just an ancient heal bot that costs one more and gives you a spell in your hand. That's fantastic. So I'll probably almost always pick this in Arena unless I have a very low-curve deck. Probably not going to see it very much in Constructed. Kindly Grandmother. So this is one of two beast cards uh, that are being added that we know about so far in the One Night in Karazhan expansion. It is bonkers. It is super, super good. It has a ton of value. It's like playing a 4-3 for 2, and it survives board wipes, and it's beast synergy on both sides of the death rattle, and it's death rattle synergy if you happen to play something like Princess Huron, or you're playing some kind of gimmicky death rattle focused hunter deck. It, it's just fantastic. It's not as good as Haunted Creeper, because it's not quite the same stat lineup. Haunted Creeper was a 3-4. But the stuff that came out of the other side of Haunted Creeper's Death Rattle wasn't a beast. So that you actually might see that kind of tilted back in the favor of Kindly Grandmother. This card is absolutely fantastic. You're going to see a lot of it being dropped on turn 2, surviving into turn 3, and then getting popped on turn 3. But the beast that results can't be killed on turn 4, which lets you Hound Master it and get a 5-4 taunt, which is just fantastic. You're going to see it enable Ram Wrangler in a lot of the same ways we've seen Infested Wolf enabling that card. I think you're going to see this in basically every aggressive or mid-range hunter deck, and probably even in those rare control hunter decks as well. It's just a lot of value. It's very good. I think it's an excellent card. And Arena, equally good. Anything that gives you 4-3 of stats for 2 mana is just going to be killer. The fact that it activates beast synergies and hunter is just gravy. It's just icing on the cake. It's a fantastic card all the way around. You're going to see this all over the place. Get used to it. All right, Barnes. Barnes is a neutral legendary. He is a 3-4 four for 4, and his battle cries, you summon a 1-1 one, one copy of a random minion from your deck. Now, you may have noticed that this whole 1-1 one, one copy thing has become a theme recently, and that's because it's awesome. It allows you to kind of stealthily increase the value of minions with strong effects and strong death rattles without just putting a ton of meat on the board. It lets them produce cards like Barnes that have this crazy effect, but they're counterbalanced by the fact that so there are some cards that when they get brought out by this aren't going to be very good. Um, three, four, 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 not a very good stat line. It's 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 not impressive. It's not going to beat anybody up. You're never going to be super happy that you have this body on the board. I mean, you get a three, four, four, three as a common. You can get a spider tank. So, but Barnes is going to 
really amp up the power level of Malagos Rogue, Malagos Druid, Freeze Mage, all these decks that only play a few really potent creatures are going to effectively get an extra copy of those creatures in the form of Barnes as early as potentially turn four, right? So if you're playing Nazoth Priest, you're playing Nazoth Paladin, you're playing Nazoth Rogue, you could drop Barnes and the worst thing that happens to you in some of these decks is you get like a Tomb Pillager. You get a 1-1 one -one Tomb Pillager. Whatever, man. You got another coin and another guy to be brought back with off. If you're playing Yogg Rogue, you get a bonus coin off of Barnes and an extra 1-1 one -one of value. So he's basically a 4-5. Um, but if you really want to see where this card's going to shine, it's going to be in specifically Nazoth Priest and Freeze Mage, like Malagos Freeze Mage. You know, Malagos Freeze Mage can get away playing two or three creatures. So you can play, for example... Um, Barnes, Malagos, Antonidas. Boom. Now, Barnes is a second copy of either of those other cards that could come out as early as turn four, or that could make all the difference later. Um, in the Zoth Priest, you know, it's absolutely at worst going to be like an extra Doomsayer, which can kind of suck, but that's only if you play Doomsayer in the Zoth Priest. You could revamp the deck around Barnes' existence and take out like the Doomsayers and the Wild Pyromancers and run more spell based AoE early game uh, anti zoo cards. And use Barnes to just pull out either an extra Cairn, an extra Sylvanas, an extra Chill Maw, like even just an extra Shifting Shade. That's still really good. Um, this card is being severely underestimated. You're going to see it in several control decks. You might even see it in some mid range decks that have very uh, valuable death rattles or end of turn effects. Uh, both Ragnaroses are great targets for this, for example. Great card. In Arena, totally terrible. You will be very upset if you have to take this. This is like boogeyman level bad in Arena. You, you can't have the sort of control over your deck's structure that you need to make Barnes really good in Arena, and as a result, he's, he's just going to be very underwhelming. Don't take him. If you see him, you're probably going to win. Be happy. But in Constructed, this guy is going to be a complete game-changing bomb. Though not the biggest complete game-changing bomb you're going to see in this list. Because the biggest complete game-changing bomb you're going to see in this list is the Curator. He is a 4-6 taunt for 7. He's a neutral legendary. But his battle cry is that you draw a beast, a dragon, and a murloc from your deck. So he's basically nourishing you, but you have control over what cards you're going to get from that. And that's what's really, really good about this guy. He seems underwhelming at first because he's got this 4-6 taunt body for 7. He's basically half of Twin Emperor. Really not very uh, very impressive. Only 10 points of stats for 7 mana is extremely undercosted. But that's because he has a 5 mana spell, Nourish, attached to him, except slightly better because you can control it. Say, for example, you're playing a control deck, you could drop the Curator and force yourself to draw, you know, Stampeding Kodo, uh, Corrupted Seer, and then whatever dragon you want that's in your deck, you know, Ysera, Malagos, Alexstrasza, Chromagus, whatever, you can control what the Curator is going to give you, and that's what makes him, much like Barnes, so good in certain control decks, is that with the correct, like, very precise fine-tuning, and lots of science, and lots of building and practice, we're going to see somebody crack the format wide open with a control deck that uses the Curator to great effect by just giving you a bunch of extra tools when you need them. Uh, in Arena, not very good. Again, it's just a really shitty body. It's not very strong. It's not really going to do much. And you don't have the level of deck control, much like the problem with Barnes, in order to ensure that you're going to draw good cards with this. So it's not quite as bad as Barnes in Arena because it is still kind of a body and will probably draw you something. But it's still pretty bad. But much like Barnes, you're going to see this have a huge impact on the control metagame. It's going to do good stuff. It's going to be great. Ethereal Peddler. This is probably my favorite card out of the ones that we've seen so far. It's a rogue class card. It costs five. It's a five six, very aggressively costed stats. You might recognize this from a classic neutral card called Pit Fighter that is, you know, perfectly good, gets a lot of play in Arena. But his battle cry is reduce the cost of cards in your hand from other classes by two. So everything you've burgled, everything you've Undercity huckstered, anything that you've ganged up into your deck, anything like that, can all just get a sweeping two-cost reduction. If he didn't have such a good base body, if he wasn't at worst a pit fighter, I'd say this guy can just go in the trash can and nobody cares about him. But because he has that really aggressive basic body, which ensures he's never a dead card for a mid-range deck that can benefit from just a 5-6 body, you might actually see this guy be worth doing. Um, there's a lot of weird tricks you can do with it. You can gang up and then like play gang up, 
creature, a ganged up creature, and shadow caster it back and play that and do a bunch of uh, cool tricks. And it, this card is like the last piece that we need to see one really tricky kind of burgled deck. Like a deck that is just focused on stealing cards from your opponent, you know? It can play Nefarian, it can play Burgle, it can play Gang Up, it can play Undercity Huckster. There's all sorts of weird stuff you could do with this uh, that could be very interesting. And But what it really all comes down to is, at worst, he's a Pit Fighter, and Pit Fighter is okay. I mean, he beats up Emperor Thorasan, right? Like, he can just fight five fives all day and, and give you value in the worst-case scenario. And that's why I think you're going to see him played a little bit in... Kind of like mid rangey rogue, like maybe even in Yogg Rogue, which already kind of wants to play things like Burgle. Not necessarily Gang Up, but things like Burgle. Um, I don't know. It's a hard to predict card. Definitely my favorite. I love the rogue steal cards from your opponent's class mechanic. It's very cool, it's very clutch, and I think this card's actually going to be surprisingly good. Excellent in, in Arena because it's Pit Fighter, and Pit Fighter is like a top tier card in Arena anyway. And if you happen to have the synergy that goes with this guy, then. Woohoo! Bonus! You get that too. So, not only is he just a pit fighter, he might do a cool thing for you. Easy pick. You're going to take him pretty often in Arena. Pit fighter's a great card. This guy's a great card. I'm digging him. Hopefully we see some cool stuff. Also, <laughs> the dream, I'm just going to go ahead and say this, the dream for this guy is to renounce darkness as a warlock into a rogue and draw this card because then he would hit every card in your hand because it checks for a different class you're a warlock and the rogue cards it doesn't check for non-rogue cards it checks for different class cards so hopefully i can achieve that i might just play like 100 games when this adventure comes out and just hope that that happens so i can show you guys but that's like the dream all right, next up is Enchanted Raven, easily the least uh, flashy or impressive card, but possibly one of the most impactful. It is merely a 2-2 two, two for 1 with the Beast subtype that is a Druid exclusive class card. Now you may be asking yourself, how is this fucking fair? Think about it for a second. There are 1-3s in other classes, so the same stat number baseline. Tunnel Trog is a 1-3 that gets way bigger. Northshire Cleric is a 1-3 that draws you a bajillion cards. So if you think about it, it's really not unreasonable for a specific class, one of the sub-themes of that class being big dudes, to get a 2-2 two -two for one that has the beast subtype. It's not that unreasonable. It's the beast subtype that actually makes it really good. If it was just a 2-2 two -two for one with no other qualifiers, you might not even see it in most druid decks because you don't see a lot of druid decks that have early aggression, that have heavy tempo in them. You have a lot more kind of mid-rangey or Cthulhu druid decks in the meta right now. This card might change that because there is one very achievable dream you can do with Enchanted Raven, which is, of course, turn one Enchanted Raven, turn two Mark of Yasharaj, which gives you a 4-4 four, four and draws you a card. So basically, you you come out card even, you've effectively played a 4-4 four, four for 3, except you got to do it over two turns and use your one drop up. It's super good. And this card may be just enough to push Beast Druid over the line into viability. You can combine this card with uh, Druid of the Fang to do a late game drop that just gives you a 2-2 two -two and a 7-7. Seven -seven. Like, boom, out of nowhere. There haven't been a lot of really good low-cost beasts that enable that that are worth playing. Um, this card is great. It's fair. Uh, it's good. You're probably going to see a decent amount of it. I don't think Cthulhu Druid's going to bother playing it because it doesn't need the body. You might see it a little bit in, like, rampy, mid-rangey Druid. Um, and obviously, you're going to see it in every Beast Druid, every every tempo Druid deck ever made. Uh, very good. Uh, in Arena, very good. It's a 2-2 two, two for 1. Uh, Zombie Chow is a 2-3 for 1 with a somewhat significant negative effect, and it was considered the best 1 drop ever printed. So 2-2 two, two for 1, which can fight with all the other 1-2s out there, which can kill all the 3-2s out there. It's fine. It's going to be a great 1 drop. When you take it, you're going to feel good about it. And if you get it with the Mark of Yasharaz, which is a common, uh, you're going to have an even better time. So yeah, overall, great card. You're going to see a lot of it in both formats, I think. All right, and finally, we have Firelands Portal. Uh, it's a mage spell. It costs seven, and the effect is deal five damage and summon a random five-cost minion. I really don't know how to feel about this card. On one hand, it gives you a ton of value. You're effectively dealing five damage for two mana and getting a random guy. Uh, but five drops aren't, like, the super sexiest spot. You know, if this, cost, if this card cost eight and summoned a six drop, it would be fucking phenomenal. It would be absolutely incredible. It would be in every mage deck ever made. But at seven mana, it doesn't fit into Tempo Mage, really. 
Uh, the guy that it summons isn't going to be reliably good. There's a lot of five drops that don't have really good bodies for their size because they have other cool effects or whatever. Um, and five damage is nice, but you can do six damage with a fireball for four mana. So this spell might show up in like Reno, Jackson, or oriented Freeze Mage decks. Um, it does give another worthwhile spell, a spell that gives a ton of value. So basically Freeze Mage is going to possibly use this, but you're not going to see it in like Malagos Mage, you're not going to see it in Tempo Mage, you're not going to see it in you know, whatever other mage archetypes there are that aren't freeze mage. It's just too expensive, too slow, but it's decent. And a deck that's really oriented on going to the late game and getting a ton of value every card, this does that. It gives you a, a ridiculous amount of value on one card, just that most decks aren't really going to be able to find a space for it compared to something like Cobbless Tome, uh, Ethereal Conjurer, etc. In Arena, I would take this pretty much every time if I had a deck that was kind of slanted towards the late game. has the same problem where it doesn't have a lot of good tempo, it just drops a 5-drop and maybe kills something. Not that great, but if you happen to get a, a, an Arena deck in which you're kind of on the, the lopsided end of the, the curve, if you're on the 4-plus the end of the curve and you've got some early game removal and you can kind of play a, a pseudo-control deck in Arena, this card is fine. Um, it's going to come up against uh, other common mage spells, so in some cases you'll take that because you don't want the other spells. But overall, not super good in Arena. You're not going to see a whole bunch of it in Constructed. Pretty much only going to see it in Freeze Mage. But it's, it's, it's an interesting card. It's got a lot of value. And I might. this is one of the ones that I'm not sure about. Like I feel like it might not be good enough, but it actually might be super, super good. Somebody might do the math on what five drops are, and I'm uh, maybe my conception of them will be somewhat off. This is the one card that I, I would say I expect to possibly be wrong on more so than the other ones. Great card overall uh, for Freeze Mage. Otherwise, you're just not going to see a lot of it in Tempo or in Arena. All right, and so that does it for One Night at Karazhan. The first seven cards... As more cards get released, I'll try and record more of these uh, First Thought videos. Be sure to let me know what you think. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and otherwise affirm my digital existence. Thank you guys so much. Um, we're probably going to be able to go on to a regular streaming schedule sometime soon, doing a blend of Hearthstone and uh, JRPGs, both contemporary and classic. So please subscribe. There's going to be a lot more videos coming up soon. Um, also, make sure that you check out the Play Together project. It's another project that I'm a part of. Uh, it's a tabletop gaming group that is focused on both tabletop games and also um, progressive political advocacy, making things better in the world and in our community. We'd really appreciate your help if that's your thing. If not, just you can watch me wear silly vests and talk about Hearthstone cards. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. See ya, okay.